We're here at Triumph's UK headquarters and I have with me Steve Sargent, who's Triumph's Chief Product Officer, um, so that we can talk about the new Bonneville family. So Steve, in a nutshell, what are we looking at here? So this is the next generation of the, of the Bonneville family. So these bikes will incorporate all of the updates that we've made for 2021. Uh, part of that is Euro 5, but also it's an improvement in the capability and the technology and the performance of the bikes. I think we've got seven bikes here, is that right? That's right. And uh, what we haven't got though are the scramblers. I think those are going to be revealed, or I know those are going to be revealed a little bit later on in April. If we go round one at a time, maybe you could tell me what specifically is new for 2021 with each one. Maybe starting with the T120, and I think we have the T120 black here. Yeah, so let's start with the T120, which, you know, in uh, many ways is kind of the original uh, of the family. Uh, it's it's the, probably the father of this group. And, you know, with the T120, we've made some significant changes for this year. Uh, obviously, the Euro 5 is, is part of it, the improvement to the emissions. Uh, but in addition to that, we've made some significant changes to the performance of the vehicle. So internally within the engine, uh, we've reduced the inertia on some of the parts that are part of the rotating mass. So that's the crankshaft, uh, the clutch and the balancer shafts. Now what that does is it just makes the engine feel a bit livelier when you're riding it, particularly you know, when you're on a closed or a partial throttle, just opening the throttle, the engine spins up a bit faster. Uh, it gives you a bit more response to it. Uh, we've added the Brembo calipers on the bike. So we've got Brembo twin pot calipers twin discs obviously on the T120. So we've added uh, cruise control as a, as a really nice feature that the customers uh, will you know, really appreciate. In addition to the reduction in the inertia, obviously there's an overall reduction of weight on the bike. So there's a seven kilo reduction in weight. A significant part of that comes from the engine. Also a significant part comes from the, the change to the aluminium wheel rims. Um, and then, you know, as with all of the, these bikes, we've got new colors as well. Okay. So I understand that's the T100? Yep, T100. Uh, 900cc twin cylinder, big change on this bike this year. So we've gone up 10 PS in power. So we're up to 65 uh, PS in terms of power. It has a similar level of change internally within the engine. So we've got that reduction in, uh, in inertia. Um, so more power, more responsive engine. Uh, in addition to that, we've also gone for the uh, Brembo. Uh, twin pot calipers on the front end of the bike. As with all of these bikes for this year, we've also got a change on the electronics package. We now have a unique traction control and ABS tune. So that means when you go from road to rain mode, you get a change in the ABS tune and also a change in traction control tune. And that was just a throttle map before? So previously that was a, that was a throttle map, right. but now you've got traction control and ABS tunes as well. Okay. Um, tell me about these two then. So you've got the Speedmaster and the Bobber. What's new with these? Again, uh, really responding to uh, customer feedback on the bikes. Uh, the Speedmaster, the significant changes on the Speedmaster relate primarily to, to comfort in many ways. So if you look at the seats, we've gone for a more comfort rider seat. You've got the lumbar support on the seat. Right. And that's really effective if you're doing long distance travel, you're traveling on the bike for a, for a reasonable distance. The one thing about the Speedmaster obviously is, you know, you've got a pillion seat on here, you can ride two up. Uh, we've got a larger and a more comfortable pillion seat on the bike. So not just touring solo, but touring two up, um, significant increase in comfort. Front end of the bike, we've got the larger diameter front forks. So we've got 47 millimeter uh, cartridge forks, which give more control over the damping and the feel of the front end. And also just give the bike that slightly more comfortable feel going, going over slightly rougher ground. Bobber wise, big thing on the bobber uh, is the increase in the fuel tank. So we've gone up to a 12 litre fuel tank from uh, nine litres. Again, based on feedback from the customers, customers love their bobbers. We've sold loads of bobbers mm. since we launched it, but because customers love them so much, what they're basically saying to me, oh, I want to ride it longer. So, you know, how can we do that? Basically give them more fuel to use. So right. uh, again, based on feedback from customers, larger fuel tank on the bobber. And from this year, we are focusing on one bobber going forwards. So previously we had a bobber and a bobber black. What we uh, found in terms of feedback from the customers is that they really love that kind of fatter front end on the bike. So going forwards, one version of the bobber with the 47 millimeter forks, the fatter front end, the twin discs, um, and again, the, the twin calipers on there. So, you know, again, nice improvement to the bike. 
uh, and similar reduction in terms of the inertia in the engine. And I guess the last two is the Street Twin, yeah, um, which is, uh, is updated again, and also this here. Tell, tell us about these two. So we did a significant change to the Street Twin last year. Uh, we made the significant changes to the engine. We gave it extra 10 PS power last year, and we changed to the Brembo calipers. For this year, uh, we focused on improving the looks and style of the bike. Uh, obviously, it's a bike that a lot of people, you know, absolutely love the look and the style of it. So changes we've made, uh, we've got a new side panel on here. We've got new throttle body covers. We've got a new aluminium heel guard. We've got a modified seat, which is not uh, only improved for the looks, but the other thing we've done is we've given it more comfort. So we've got a little bit more foam in there, a bit more comfortable seat. And uh, we've got the revised aluminium headlight mounts on the front end of the bike. On top of that, changes to the instruments. All of the single instrument clocks have had a new change to the dial face. Nice bit of Bonneville branding on there. So, you know, really just focusing on that kind of quality and the detailing on the bikes, you know, as, as we do with all of these bikes. I guess talking about detailing, this is a limited edition. Yeah, so at the front here, we've got the, the Street Twin Gold Line. Right. Um, and that really is a celebration of, you know, the, the kind of craftsmanship that goes into, into these bikes and to Triumphs. Um, obviously, quite uniquely, we hand paint our gold lines. On this particular bike, you have a gold line running down the center of the fuel tank. Uh, we've got a gold line that runs around the brushed aluminum knee pads on the side of the tank. And then you've got a hand painted gold line also on the side panels. So really lovely piece of craftsmanship. Uh, the scheme itself, you know, it's kind of a, a combination of uh, a retro, but a contemporary take on retro with, a, with the matte blacks, you know, and the silvers and the golds on there. I think, you know, it's a beautiful looking bike. There's only a thousand of these worldwide and they come with a certificate. So, so yep, there's only a thousand of these worldwide. They come with a certificate. You know, in each individual market, they're going to be fairly limited in numbers. So, you know, if you want to get your hands on this bike, which I'm sure a lot of people will, then you need to get in early. Great, thank you very much, Steve. Okay. Okay, so Miles, we have here the 2021 Triumph Bonneville T120, but alongside it, we have this beautiful piece of machinery. Um, what can you tell us about it? Well, this is the, uh, the genesis, really, of the whole Bonneville family. This is the 1959 Bonneville T120. Its name, Bonneville, comes from the land speed record in 1956, where a Triumph Thunderbird set a new world record at 214 miles an hour um, and coining the phrase the world's fastest motorcycle and this was a bike being developed for the American market mainly chasing more performance and speed um, in the late 1950s and when it came out it was named the Bonneville in honor of that and T120 the 120 was supposed to indicate 120 miles an hour. So in its day then, you know, it was, really was a performance machine. Yes, I would credit this as being the first or the original British superbike. This pretty much changed the face of motorcycling performance. Twin cylinder, which wasn't new, but twin carburetor and higher compression basically made this the, the, the sort of the performance leader of the day. But you add to it what, what at the time with the British uh, chassis and handling setup very light bike in comparison with things like you would be able to buy in America. And um, in, uh, in Europe, the teenagers went wild for this in terms of this being a cafe racer. It won races on the racetrack, set first production 100 mile an hour lap um, at the Isle of Man. And in America, kicked off uh, effectively um, what, what has followed as you know, decades of, uh, of Bonneville legends. So it was the basis of racing machinery in its day, but I understand that wasn't quite a full factory effort. Um, no, no, the, the, um, the, certainly the Isle of Man race team, if legend is, is true, um, pretty much were developing the engines without necessarily the full factory support. Um, Malcolm Uphill was a test rider, other Triumph test riders race Triumphs at the time, such as Percy Tate, and um, there was a bit of a homegrown effort involved. In fact, I think the, the bike that set the lap they had to work through the night in pulling together a variety of different uh, motorcycle parts to, to set that bike up. Um, but no, it, it won the Thruxton 500 series, got its nickname the Thruxton Racer from that. Several, uh, uh, lots and lots of different Thruxton races. That was its sort of national racing of the day. And then um, went on to do 
of course, the Isle of Man, and it was raced all over the world. So this was a, uh, something that the American racetracks would have, would have seen action from and wins as well. And not just a race machine. So I understand this is also the basis for some fairly famous stunt bikes. Yes. So um, I think one, one, one legend that's most certainly true is that Evil Knievel, um, one of the most exciting and famous stuntmen in, in, in history, he, um, his big career break came with a, a globally or nationally, internationally televised jump over Caesar's Palace Fountains, um, which he did on a Bonneville T120. Um, not dissimilar to the specification of this, it was called Colour Me Lucky. Uh, had a fantastic paint scheme on it. And um, although he went on in later years to ride other bikes, that first T120 jump was effectively career making for him. And this was also the bike used by a whole host of different motorcycle um, stars of the day to do lots of different things with. So this really was the basis of the first scramblers. So the Desert Sled, Steve McQueen, Bud Eakins, all of that Californian explosion in off-road sand racing. Um, this bike was the genesis of that. Also people made cruisers, bobbers, and of course, cafe racers. So the, uh, uh, as well as the Isle of Man, you had all the teenagers um, in Europe basically racing each other's off the lights, and the Bonneville was king of the hill. And, you know, with all of that history, no wonder it's you know, considered to be so iconic as a motorcycle. And, and this particular colour scheme for me is probably the most iconic colour scheme on the original T120s. But, but how was it perceived in the day? Well, interestingly, this is the very first build of the T120, and you can see the influence of designing a bike with the American market in mind. So like the Thunderbirds of the day, you have the nacelles with the chrome and the bright work, which is quite an Americana kind of influence. But what the American market wanted was a British racing bike. So after this was launched, it evolved very quickly in the first year to drop this, to get down to a single headlight. Also that strengthens the, the frame. Um, so you have a twin spar frame that followed. And this color scheme is famous for this first edition. So actually, whilst it's very famous, um, the Americans saw this as being maybe a little bit too garish, a little bit too American, actually. And uh, later editions didn't have this color scheme. So I believe we've borrowed this bike for the day. So can you tell us a little bit about its current hit history? Yep, so um, this is a very rare, uh, beautifully restored original T120. This comes from Dick Shepard's collection. Dick Shepard is probably uh, the most well-regarded um, a historian for classic triumphs and racing triumphs. His collection is amazing. He's got some uh, in incredible legends, including uh, the Daytona winning uh, Tiger that uh, effectively gave us the Daytona race name. Um, and this is one of his Bonneville T120s. And it, you know, just fantastic to have such famous, uh, famous names and such an amazing icon in the family, but also such uh, amazing fans of the brand to help us maintain its heritage. So we can't take it home? No, you can't have this one. Can we take this one? We can take that one then. Okay, cool. <laughs>